द पाकिस्तान स्टोरी के नॉट बी टोल्ड विदाउट डेल्विंग इन टू द ऑल इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑफ हाउ इट वॉज दैट द पाकिस्तानी मिलिट्री केम टू ऑक्यूपाई इट्स आउटसाइज रोल डॉक्टर जलाल राइट्स दैट पाकिस्तान डोमेस्टिक डायलेमाज ओड लेस टू द इंट्रेंसिक कल्चरल डाइवर्सिटी एंड जियोग्राफिकल पिक्यूलियरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री and more to the ways in which institutional imbalances exacerbated center region tensions the supremacy of the non elected institutions over elected institutions not only survived the tentative experiment in parliamentary democracy during that very important first decade but the military dispensation after 1958 also persisted following the break up of pakistan in 1971 The emerging structural imbalance within the state in the first decade was given constitutional legitimacy by a judiciary forced into subservience by an all-powerful executive. This resulted in a centralized state structure, federal in form and unitary in substance, whose military authoritarian character was at odds with the tenor of politics in the regions. Before 1947 the British Joint Chiefs of Staff had questioned the wisdom of carving out a state from the northwestern and northeastern parts of the subcontinent that would have to pay the same amount of defense as undivided India with far fewer economic resources question of defense was always going to be financially draining for the new state and that the defense of the subcontinent had to be taken together because a separate defense for pakistan would e- be economically wasteful and quite impracticable special perks and privileges would have to be given to the serving military personnel and pensions would have to be paid to those who've retired the cumulative cost of which would be financially draining and politically destabilizing once the kashmir dispute with india reared its head in october 1947 defense expenditure became a crushing burden so whatever the emotive claims of religious affinity with kashmiri muslims it was effectively water insecurity that drove a barely armed pakistan to make the incorporation of kashmir one of its major strategic goals situation was not any better on the western front while jinnah had withdrawn the pakistan army from the frontier regions in return of status quo afghanistan's meddling into the frontier regions began right from the beginning prime minister nehru's government was standing up for its old colleague khan abdul ghaffar khan the leader of the khudai khidmatkars which are also known as red shirts having led him down badly at the time of partition both ghaffar khan and his brother dr khan saab were in favor of kabul's campaign to establish pakhtunistan a state based on afghanistan's merger with nwfp and the pathan majority areas of balochistan this made the defense cooperation between india and pakistan non-existent jinnah's death on september 11 1948 was a setback to the political arms of the state and a body blow for the constitutional future of Pakistan even during jinnah's lifetime the provincial muslim leagues had turned into personal fiefdom of influential landlord politicians the central leadership to advance their own political interests readily exploited rivalries among provincial politicians the organizational infirmities of the muslim league coupled with the imperatives of financially strapped and insecure central government resulted in policies that paid little heed to the democratic impulse in the regions the political government of laqat ali khan had found itself at odds with senior pakistani officers over kashmir preferred anglo american resolution of the problem was to partition kashmir over the chenab river this would leave the bulk of the disputed territory in indian hands with pakistan settling for about one third of the former princely state senior pakistani officers agreed with their british mentors that this was the only realistic solution to the problem this was an anathema for liaquat the british and americans were especially interested in the appointment of the first native pakistani chief 
In late 1949, the two main contenders for the job, Major General Iftikhar Khan and Major General Sher Khan, were killed in a mysterious plane crash. Their deaths paved the way for the Anglo-American choice. The Sandhurst trained Muhammad Ayub Khan. Meanwhile, Major General Akbar Khan, the popular veteran of the Kashmir War, was arrested along with 10 other military officers and four civilians for conspiring to overthrow the government. This led to the arrest of prominent members of the Communist Party of Pakistan and other leftists, including Faiz Ahmed Faiz, the poet and intellectual and the editor of Pakistan Times. Once it had become clear that the Americans were not minded to offer anything on Kashmir, Liaquat Ali Khan started exploring other options, including the threat of a pro-Moscow policy and coordinated Pakistan-Iran-Egyptian policy on the Middle East. On October 16, 1951, Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan was assassinated in Rawalpindi. With this powerful civilian politician removed from the scene, Pakistan's citadel of parliamentary democracy fell into the hands of civil bureaucracy and their military allies. Ayub Khan's appointment first as the defense minister and then as the prime minister sealed it for the bayonets. The early promise of a constitutional government was derailed by a whirlwind of palace intrigue and political machinations. At the heart of this tumultuous period was President and last Governor General Iskandar Mirza who had a vision for consolidating his power and influence over the government. He sought to concentrate power in the presidency, viewing himself as the linchpin in the political structure. The ambition was at odds with the spirit of democracy and the principles of a parliamentary system where the Prime Minister was intended to hold significant authority. Hence, the office of the Prime Minister became a revolving door. Recognizing the unstable political environment and the power vacuum created by Mirza's ambitions, Ayub seized the opportunity to take control of the government. In October 1958, General Ayub Khan, in cahoots with the then President Iskandar Mirza, imposed Pakistan's first martial law, effectively sidelining the constitution and dismissing the civilian government. Iskandar Mirza was sent packing soon after. The coup marked the beginning of an era of military rule in Pakistan which would see General Ayub Khan becoming the country's president and subsequently ruling with an even more centralized and authoritarian approach. The shift had far-reaching implications for Pakistan's political landscape, setting a precedent for future military interventions and significantly altering the tra trajectory of the country's democratic development. The derailed 1956 constitution and the subsequent military takeover marked a pivotal moment in Pakistan's history, shaping its political dynamics for decades to come and laying the foundation for Pakistan's eventual breakup.